Spoonville, a spoonful of happiness. Written by Georgie Callanan, illustrated by Emily A and Vanessa C. Narrated by Melissa Cox. Designed by Brianna O'Callaghan. You have probably heard about the nursery rhyme. Hey diddle diddle, the cat and the fiddle, the cow jumped over the moon. The little dog laughed to see such sport. And the dish ran away with the spoon. Well, forget all of that, because this time there were no cats, fiddles or cows. And the dish definitely did not run away with any spoons. In fact, in this story, these spoons are superstars. Actual legends who helped to start a trend that spread all around the world. This is just one story of Spoonville and how some special spoons came together, not just as a spoon collection, but to change the world. It all began in Scotland, which is a part of the United Kingdom, and then on to England. This is where some wee little spoons became the very first Spoonvillians and inspired other spoons from around the world to brighten the lives of the people affected by the lockdown of 2020 from the virus known as COVID-19. On a gloomy day in Scotland, a wee little spoon grew tired of stirring soups and sauces in the home in which she lived. Smithy, a young wooden spoon in a Scottish household, had watched on from his pot and dish rack. The people in his town grew restless and frustrated as a pandemic known as COVID-19 was sweeping the world. The bagpipes had stopped belting out their mighty tunes and silence had fallen across the land. There was no Scottish dancing, no parades, but there was a tremendous amount of baking being done in most homes in the village. Smithy, the Scottish spoon, had been going stir crazy. He had been working overtime in lockdown as his family had been doing extra cooking. That is enough. I need to do something else in my spoony life. I need to spread joy around the world, he exclaimed. He summoned his spoony strength and hopped out of the dish rack. With all of his might, he slipped down onto the floor and bounced out of the brightly coloured kitchen in the dead of night. Smithy slithered through the dog door without disturbing anyone at the Scottish house. He used his strong wooden handle to whiz around in circles up and down the cobblestone driveway. He headed to the town hall, whispering a secret spoony sound to call an urgent meeting of all spoons. The spoons all received the secret spoony message and they too bounced and hopped on their handles into the centre of town. They were curious to find out what Smithy was up to on such a cold, drizzly Scottish night. Normally they were dry by that time and no longer acquired at such a late hour. What is Smithy up to this time? quizzed Spoony McSpoon. He was an older spoon who was tired and old after being used for generations. He had seen a lot of soups, spaghettis and sauces in his day. I really do not know, but I bet it is a wonderful idea, gushed Sammy Spoon. Sammy Spoon was Smithy's biggest fan. You could say she had a spoonful of crush on the dashing young Spoon. She had always admired his strength when he showed off his spoony muscles when stirring a stew. Every single spoon in the town came together. It was the biggest spoon collection that anyone had ever seen. There were spoons of every type, a variety of colours and sizes. They eagerly awaited the secret spoony words from Smithy, and a spoonful of silence surrounded the space in which they stood. We have a bigger job to do at the moment. We need to get a handle on the people's happiness, he said. The people of our town are faced with a tremendous challenge at the moment, and I do not mean a bake-off or a cooking competition. There is a virus going around the world. I believe our super strong spooniness can be of assistance. I mean, look at us, with our long handles and our delightful oval beaming faces. We are built for more than just stirring. The spoons became curious. What can we do? 
We've only ever known a life in a shop, a drawer, a dish rack and in pots and pans, questioned Spoony McSpoon. I've only ever known one life, staring and sitting around waiting to be used. He was dubious about how simple spoons could make even a tiny spoonful of difference. The spoon screamed out, Spoon, yes! They were excited at the prospect of becoming much more than a utensil in the kitchen. Go home and get on your best outfit. Ask the serviettes to join us. Use them as material to create a dress-up costume. Meet me back here in an hour wearing your best attire. You can wear black tie or dress up as any character you like. We are going into battle. We are going to fight Spoony hard to reclaim our people's happiness. You can take away their freedom, but you can never take away their happiness. The spoons felt elated. They bounced back to their homes and started to collect all kinds of materials. They felt magnificent as they draped serviettes around their normally bare wooden heads. Some spoons even found costume jewellery in the spare drawers of their owners and decorated themselves. They looked spoontacular. Spoonalicious, you could say. Smithy chose a Czech Scottish material which was known as a kilt. Sammy chose a glamorous silky red serviette that she draped around her slim handle. She even chose some glistening stones that stuck to the top of her wooden head. Even Spoony McSpoony found some aluminium foil and wrapped it around himself to create a suit of armour. The fruit and avocado in the kitchen popped their heads up to see what all the fuss was about. The avocado was so excited about the spoon's secret mission that it began to dance a cheek. As they gathered together, they felt empowered that they were destined to change the small quiet town that had grown silent due to the lockdown. Some dressed as pirates, others as sailor spoons, or just put on their very best outfits. There was a multitude of costumes ranging from formal wear to dressy casual. Together they looked like a bright rainbow of colours as they gathered together in the heart of the normally bustling busy town. They were no longer the plain wooden spoons that had only lived their whole lives in their owners' kitchens. Their long handles and oval faces were bright and glowed with happiness. What do we do now? quizzed the spoon collection. All right, my fellow spoons, tonight we made a difference. Our message will be heard across the lands of Scotland. Tonight, the spoons across the world will hear about our spooning. We will become an inspiration around the globe. The spoons formed lines. They zigzagged and came close together one by one. They wriggled and jiggled into the grass and rain-soaked dirt. And they determinedly buried themselves deep into the Scottish soil. Spoons unite, for here we shall stand. Our mission will be to spread happiness and spoonfuls of joy to our people. Our mission is to make the people smile. Now, there were some forks and knives who had seen what was going on and they thought the whole idea was quite ridiculous. The forks threw spiky insults at the spoons as they stood upright in the freezing cold. Needless to say, the knives and forks were not too happy. The spoons had become heroes as they spread their spoony goodness and fuzzy wuzzy feelings throughout millions of neighbourhoods. They became spoon superstars, dead set legends. The knives cut deep with their insults, but the spoons knew that they were on a mission to help the people. This was the biggest spoon mission ever. The knives and forks even tried to create their own movement, which was called South Fork. But it was kind of creepy in the green light and the kids were a little scared. The morning broke. The sun rose and the townspeople slowly came out of their homes for their daily walks. People were gloomily walking along the old laneways and cobblestone roads, socially distancing and wearing masks. They trudged along the streets, putting one foot in front of the other. It was another day in lockdown. Mom! Dad! Sean! Come here! cried out a little girl who was riding her colourful bike in front of her family. Look! 
she pointed at the rows and rows of brightly coloured spoons. They look simply amazing, screamed the local family at the top of their lungs. There were a lot of oohs and ahs. People started taking photos of the rows of spoons. The spoons proudly stood there, resilient and strong. They felt proud as people photographed them. They knew the people were now smiling and loving their presence. An old man stood near the spoons and played the bagpipes to return the favour to the spoons and to entertain the people. The townsfolk even did some Scottish dancing to celebrate. The people started taking photos and started to immediately share them on their social media. The townspeople smiled, cheered and shared the proud spoons across the world. Their pictures started being shared in the local newspaper. The local TV station quickly summoned a reporter to the spooning scene. They became quite a spoon session. The head of the Scottish newspaper did not report them as just a spoon collection. No, the spoons had really made a name for themselves. They were the stars of the town. The newspaper caption read, Spoonville comes to town. Other spoons across the globe joined the spoon movement and created their own Spoonsville. There were spoons in countries around the world. Spoons buried themselves deep in the sands of Egypt, the jungles of the Amazon and the outback of Australia. Meanwhile in Australia, did you hear about Spoonville in Scotland? asked ScoMo. He was pretty much the leader of the spoons in Australia. I think we need to cheer up our Aussie crew here. We need to unite and follow the lead of our Scottish Spoon clan. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. Aussie, oi. Aussie, oi. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. Screamed ScoMo at the top of his wooden spoon handle. <laughs> The spoons of Australia stopped stirring their meat pie sauces, soups, stews and spaghettis and together they planted their wooden bodies and buried them deep into the nature strips, footpaths, parks, in front of houses and across the neighbourhoods of Australia. People from everywhere, they took photos of the famous spoons. Some people even got out their best paint, favourite crafts and painted signs, Spoonville. Please feel free to add more spoons. People of all ages walked past during their lockdown daily exercise. Dogs sniffed cautiously and curiously and the spoons felt proud. Even at night, the possum stopped still to see such a spoony sight. The people were enjoying their spoony presence. Oh mate, these spoons are little rippers, squawked the local postman in his strong Aussie accent. Crikey, these spoons are fantastic. They look unreal, yelled the children. Even the kookaburras were sending out a special call to the spoons for cheering up the people. <laughs> the birds cried. Everyone started to realise that a spoonful of love, unity and joy can make people happier on their daily walks. Even though times were tough, the spoons had made the world a better place. A place to stop and smile and to forget any gloomy, doomy times. The people started to make more of an effort to say, Hi, or good day, how's it going mate? People realised that the spoons had taught them a lesson. That the small things in life are what truly matters. The people celebrated the spoons across the world and spoon boom was celebrated. The spoons had never felt more important. Once the virus was gone, the spoon legend of 2020 lived on and they were never just considered a kitchen utensil anymore. They were celebrated and every year the spoons came out in different costumes, this time decorated by their owners in their finest materials and a different costume every time there was a special celebration in honour of what they had done for the townsfolk. Even the knives and forks received a special invitation from the spoons, written on paper napkins asking them to join the celebrations. 
The spoons had decided that everyone needed a spoonful of goodness and the feeling of being included had been such an important message. Thank you to the Spoons of the World for brightening our day. Long live Spoonville, the people cheered. From that day on, one kitchen utensil held a special place in everyone's heart from Scotland, England, Egypt, Africa and Australia and all over the world. The Spoonvillians were heroes who would spread a positive message of happiness. Dedicated to all the children who have been so brave and amazing during COVID-19. A special thank you to all doctors, nurses, scientists, supermarket workers, chemists, and every one of our essential workers.